Hi everybody, Jo here again. How are you doing? Thanks for popping in. As always, it's so lovely to have a, a nice Tuesday catch up with you. Have you got your brew ready? Today, I thought we'd have a go at creating this design. And I just thought it's just such lovely colours and I thought we'd do a little bit of stamping, inking, some water splats. And also, we're going to be using a few different techniques. Um, we've had quite a few new followers recently, which is lovely. And um, I just wanted to show you how you can build up this lovely scene, but it's it's not difficult. It's just a few um, little hints and tips and tricks and, and it's a process that we go through. Um, but also, if you're somebody who's crafted for a long time, again, it's still a, a lovely design to create. I must admit, sometimes I love just literally stamping, add a little bit of ink for a nice quick design. Other times I like to spend a little bit longer. I think it depends how I feel. Are you the same? You know, some days I just need that quick card. Some days I just want to lose myself and actually be creative. And I've got to be honest, today's one of those days. So I'll pull up a chair and join me <clears throat> sorry as you can tell the old voice do you know what <clears throat> one of these days sorry so i'll just get a drink of water <clears throat> like i say i think this is <clears throat> this is going to be me forever <clears throat> carl's just gonna have to get used to it isn't he right that's better come on come on girl so we're going to start off with a piece of multifarious card and it's five and a half inches square and that's just because I'm going to use the six by six card blank. Now one question I've been asked quite a lot recently is I buy ready-made card blanks with envelopes and as you know I love to decorate the envelope. Now I've had quite a few messages asking me where I do buy these. Now Lavinia do sell card blanks and envelopes so have a look on the website um because again i know people are struggling with there's been obviously with with covid and manufacturing problems and and different things so do check that out right so we're going to start with our stamping first so as always i'm just going to get myself some copy of paper and i want to come in with this lovely stamp i'm going to bring this one here i've got it on my block ready I just need to check the name because, you know, I tend to rename things. So this is the Forest Inn. So if you haven't seen this stamp, it's lovely, relatively new stamp, and it's called Forest Inn. And again, there's so many uses for this. I must admit, the first thing I wanted to do was sit Pippin on the top. But I thought, no, I've got to be good. <laughs> but there again, I haven't used Pippin for a while. So... I may just be thinking of a design where I do need to use him because he's feeling a bit neglected. These mice have taken over a little bit. So as always for me, I'm just going to start with my stamping first. And there's a lot of detail in this stamp. Just need to, I just seem to have a bit of a puddle of ink there. Do you know what? I think I've got a bit of glitter, a bit of glitter on my on my stamp. You know what that's like, don't we? It gets everywhere. <laughs> right, so I'm going to position this sort of here. And again, I'm just stamping on the side because that's the way my head works. And like I say, this stamp, there's so much beautiful detail and there's some gorgeous little um, fairy ladders. So do check them out. We've got some gorgeous little um, small pixie houses as well. Again, something for me to use next time. I like to introduce them slowly because, again, if you haven't got a lot of funds, I think it's important to see how these new stamps mix and match with what we've already got. So there's my gorgeous forest in. And I'm going to add one of my mice. And I do believe this one is Basil. Basil? Those uh, people from Faulty Towers will uh, <laughs> be suddenly shrieking that. So again, we'll give him. And he's carrying a lantern. And in my head, he's just coming out at night. He just wants to see what's happening. So I just want to put him a little bit further down. So he's a scale-wise, 
it's always a little bit nearer to us and that will help with um, sort of perspective. Now again is a silhouette so just want to give that ink time to soak in and again there's a lot of detail with him. There we go and obviously he stamps beautifully. So we're just going to give him a wipe with my inky binky and put him back with all his other little mice friends. They have really got in my head these mice. I just use them so much. Now, what I'm going to do is give that a bit of a blot. Again, Versafine Claire, a slower drying ink. So always get used to giving it a blot. Now, just with my black fine liner pen, I just want to almost ground my mouse a little. So he just doesn't look like he's floating. And here, Tracy's drawn us the most beautiful little dots around. And I'm just going to add a few more just almost to, to ground the design a little bit more and sort of bring the two together just to almost join those two. And it doesn't take a lot, don't go over the top. Just want to add that little bit more. And what we'll do now, we'll bring in, so the way I'm going to approach this is for me, I like to stamp my main images first, just because again, for me, if you're new at crafting, it's a good way, once your images are stamped beautifully, then we'll add our scene, so we're going to add some ink around, then we'll build up some colour, and then we'll add the finishing touches. And all these steps are ones that you could stop at that level if you wanted, or you could carry on the design. So, belt and braces, I know I've, but I really don't want it to smudge. Now, Let's add some landscaping. So we'll bring our acetate hill masks. Now again, there are four here. And we just want the flatter one to start off with. And in my head, that's number one. And then we're going to go for the next one, which has sort of got some little hills on. We have got mountainous ones, but I don't want those today. And I want my stencil brush with the green ink on. And we're going to use two of our elements inks, Bermuda and Lime Punch. And we'll start with Bermuda because again, to help with perspective, I want it darker in the foreground. So take the lid off and as always, dab some ink and then take some off in my lid. Now we'll just put some under basil first and again just spend your time just looking where the shape and I like that shape just goes under his feet and under his tail always dab some ink off on your mask and then I'm just going to use circular motions and just build up and this is going to be in the foreground and don't worry too much if you have the odd line again re-inking don't worry at all, we're going to spritz this with water and if you get any lines, honestly, we can save it. So this is a good one if you've not done this before. Now I know I said circular motions, I tend, once I've got the depth I want, I tend to actually, I've got less ink on my brush now and in fact there's probably very little ink left on my brush, but I'm just almost going to blend that across, just to help even that colour out. Lift up. And yeah, I'm happy with that. And it just goes lovely under, sorry, I should turn it round for you, shouldn't I? Under his feet and under his tail. So let's have one now under here. And again, I don't want, you see, if I did that straight up to me, that looks wrong. That's too uniform. So let's just move the shape a bit. Now I want it under there, under those flowers. But I want a different shape. Right, I'm going to go for that. Now again, I'm going to ink up, but if possible, I want this a little bit lighter. So let's come in, a bit of a lighter touch this time. And again, I can build the colour up, flick in from the side, maybe just a bit more on this side. Yeah, happy with that. So give this a wipe with my inky binky. Because again, I don't want to put it away with ink on. 
and I'm going to change my colour now. I'm going to come into the line punch. Now, what I tend to do is I'm going from dark to light. Now, just in case, I'm just going to rub. You could use your kitchen towel, a bit of tissue, but I'm just going to use my inky binky. There's very little on there, but just in case there was any of that dark. And then let's have a look. How we're going to have these. Quite like that one over the top of his head. Right, I'm going to go for that. So again, on the lid. I'm just going to bring the colour in from the sides because I've got the most ink on my brush. And that's where I want the deepest colour. This is such a lovely colour. I'm just going to blend a bit over the darker green. There we go. And again, just going to blend over because I'm using a lighter colour over a darker. And it'll just blend. And as I say, it really helps with that perspective. And I've just purposely left a little bit of white round there. Just helps my figures pop. Now, I could add some more hills if I wanted, but I think I'll leave it like that. By the time I've put my moon mask in, I don't want to... Ooh, nearly. don't want to overdo it. So I'll swap my stencil brush. And again, just wipe that. But also, I want to be mindful, I've got some ink on here. So, just give that a wipe. It's important to keep your area as clean as possible. Just so you've got less chance of your ink transferring. I'm going to come in with the Della Blue now. And let's get our acetate circle masks. Now again, you can choose which, which size you want. There's a few different sizes, look. Obviously the big one for me, too big. Oh, we could use that one. Actually, I think I might. I used the smaller one on my original, but for a change, I think we'll go for that one. Do you know, I do love to change my mind. And again, if you knew, I put a little dab of acrylic paint or Posca pen on my masks just because it's easy for me to see where they are because they do like to hide now i'm thinking i want him to be looking up so i'm thinking we'll put that there i think so again into my ink into the lid and always onto the mask first and if you start at the base, you've got the most ink and that'll almost add to the illusion of um, depth because you want it darker at the base anyway. And if by any chance you came on with too much ink, don't worry at the base. So gentle, circular motions. Now I'm actually going to do the whole of the sky with this colour. So I'm going to work my way out. And again, just being mindful to go around the image. Now at this point, I don't want you to worry about how dark this looks and if you've got lines, because again, there's ways of getting rid of this. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to get my piece of, well, it's not very clean, is it? Let's get a treat ourselves, shall we? Go on, it's Tuesday. Treat yourself to a clean piece of kitchen towel. So let's wipe our mask and put that away. Again, keeping these good habits. And I want to add some blue to the sky. So again, on the lid. And then on the corner first. And if you're not good at blending with your stencil brush, this is an ideal time to just practice. It can be quite specific, look, down the side. Turn your work round. On the corner I'm going to work my way along the top. It's a great way of getting used to um, practicing with your stencil brush. And I almost want to leave just a little gap. I don't want my blue and my green to overlap. But also, if I leave a little bit of a white gap, it will almost um, make the scenery pop. So obviously in here, look, can you see we've got a little space there? So I'm just going to pinch my brush 
and just dab a little bit of ink. And again, I've not re-inked. And so can you see by doing that, and I've still got the white space there. Now, don't worry here, we've got a few lines. I mean, at the minute, I'm happy with that because it almost looks like clouds, but I'm going to spritz it with water. So that will all disappear. So don't overthink. I really want you to have confidence with these stencil brushes. And don't overthink getting that absolute perfect um, smooth finish. So what we will do, we're going to add a little bit of water here. So my fan brush, you can hear is in my pot. I want to tap a little bit off to start off with. A little bit of water. And we're just going to flick water. And this water will just give such a lovely effect. So I want to add a little bit more. And if drops go over the moon, doesn't matter. I want a little bit just on the hills here. We've stamped in VersaFine Clear, which is a permanent ink. So the water will not affect that at all. And as the water starts, look, you'll see this beautiful effect and that will just take I mean, it's a great way of adding snow and um, stars in a night sky but also if you're not sure on your blending it's just a great way of distracting from it now i'm just going to we're going to add some color here so just in case I've, i could have masked this but to be honest i don't need to so while we're coloring this the rest can be drying so to add some colour, I'm just going to come in and these are just polychromos. These are just normal colouring pencils. I'm not doing anything too difficult. And as I say, while well, that card's drying. Now when I add colour, I'm not a colourist at all. Um, but in my head, I just always have a light, a medium and a dark. So I'm going to go for blue. One of the reasons I've gone for blue is A, I think it looks really lovely. I've really got into blue at the minute. But also, if I've got any ink here, it doesn't matter because I'm going to colour over it. So I'm going to start because I know the darkest of my colour will be at the base. So I'm going to come in here and just go round. Now again, you will take longer than me. And honestly, you will find this so relaxing. So this is my darker colour at the base. And I'm trying hard not to put my head. So if my head comes in shot, I do apologise. And I promise I'm not sticking my tongue out. I love doing colouring at workshops because it's amazing how many ladies and gentlemen do. And it always goes quiet. I love to do colouring after lunch because it goes nice and quiet. You know, I can go and have a little nap, but don't tell anyone that. That's our secret. Right, so darker at the base. And then I'm going to come in with my next colour. And this is just my mid blue. And again, for me, this is very simple, easy colouring. But it just helps give me, if you use the three colours, the graduation in the colours, the tones, it just helps make it look more 3D. But as I say, you don't have to be a colouring expert. Now you could do the same. You could do this in reds and oranges. You know, you could even mix, have yellow at the top. But I thought I'd go away from my, my favourite colours. I thought I'd be good. And I try and hold my pencils in my hand so that I'm not actually picking them up and putting them down on my mat too much. Just because I'm always conscious of how much I lift up and put them down. Now, when I come in, these are a wax-based crayon. So when I come in with my light blue, I'm actually going to colour over the other two blues. And that does two things. A, it helps blend all three colours together. But B, with them being a wax crayon, I press a little bit harder and that just blends them and seals them. So I'm happy with that. I think with my darker one, I'm just going to come in at that base just to give a little bit more darker at the base. And again, I'm always leaning on my, my kitchen towel so I'm just coming in at the base there. Give a bit more shade, that looks better. Right, this bit we want blue, so again, darker, mid, and then a little bit with light, but I'm actually going to leave a little bit of white. Again, that just helps with the highlights. 
So these gorgeous little flowers I'm going to colour with my, my blue. I just love this combination of the blue and green. Sometimes it's nice, nice not to add too many different colours. And I think we'll just this again. We're gonna have it's gonna be deep around there, isn't it? And then we'll add our mid colour and then just come in with our lighter and just blend over the whole lot. And as I say, you would spend a little bit longer making it perfect. I think that's that's okay. So I'll put those down and then come in. The next colour I want to use is some green. So again, I've gone for a dark green, a mid green and a light green. And again, pencil's beautifully sharpened, although I have to say, I think my dark green could do with a bit sharper, but hey ho. So I know that on the stem here, I'm going to have some shade there. And also this side, we've got shade. And again, your moon's there. So we will have shade here. Again, down here, it's going to be darker under the little house there because we've got shade and down this side and then the same I'm going to add these green so this side we've got our darker colour lovely mid green so we'll just go over that darker green and just come in with this lovely mid colour sort of about halfway and again on these bits we come in we know it's always darker at the base and on this side because obviously the light's there so with our lighter colour now just come in and blend over the whole lot and I'm not going right up to the edge because I want to leave a little bit of white I mean I could always add my white pen but it's nice to actually leave a little bit of white as well And again, that lovely blend. So if I bring that up, as I say, you will take a little bit longer and be neater. But basically, that's how we get that lovely blend of those colours. And again, we don't want to see lines. So just use that lighter colour to blend over the others. And that will just help. And while you've been doing that, this will be drying beautifully. We can use our heat tool, I'll just whiz it over, but it's nice if it just dries um, as naturally as it can. So just to help it on the way, we'll just give it a bit of a whiz. And then what we're going to do now, we just want to add some extra colour. So we're going to come in with our gel pens here. Now we want to add some lovely, this gold is, you. oh I'm brilliant, I use this gold so much. So we're just going to put somebody in the little house here, look. And what we'll do, we'll add this lovely bit here that Trace is drawn. And that's perfect for just coming in with our gold. And then again, we're just going to add some little dots. And again, I'm just going in this bottom corner because then that will help the top look like it's got its white highlight. And this gold pen just sort of makes everything pop and looks nice and bright. So I'm almost adding my shade, but with a, a gold pen. And again, just down the sides here where I've got these little dots that Trace is drawn, I'm just going to add a few little gold ones, almost make it look a bit more sort of magical. And then with my white pen, I can always just add some little white highlights. Well, to be honest, because I've left the card white, I don't really need it. And I've also got this lovely blue one. So I'm just going to add a few little blue dots around our blue flowers on here. And again, I think that just looks really pretty. So what we'll do now is we just want to add something to him. So our basil. So 
I'm going to come bring in my um, chalk pastel pencils and I just want the white and the black. Again, they do tend to be my favourites and it's very naughty because I shouldn't have favourites. So I just want to give Basil a little bit of shape and again, because we, he would just be catching a little bit from the moon there and it just gives him his legs there, look. He's got the tummy, look. And again, I just use my finger just to smudge it. And I don't want it to be too bright. And then we'll add a little bit of shade. So again, I'm thinking the moon's there, so the shadow will probably come this way a bit. And the same with him. And I'm not going to overthink it because we're going to put some stamping here. But I just want that idea of shadow. And again, I'm just smudging it to fix it. Lovely. I'm happy with that. And, and it doesn't take a lot, but it just helps to build up that whole design. And it's something about using all the products we've got. So what we're going to do now is just add a little bit more stamping. And I've got these gorgeous little stamps, which are called the Woodland Fern. So again, just get my copy of paper. Now for this, I could go straight with the black, but I'm thinking, let's keep on with the green theme. Now we've got the two. So we'll start at the top and I'm going to start with the green. So this is our Shady Lady. Sorry, Shady Lane. She's always going to be Shady Lady in my head. And I just want to add some canopy at the top here. Just want a little bit to come over the moon look. And again, I just want to create a nice shape. Just to help sort of frame my card. But as I say, you could stop at this point if you wanted. Maybe a couple of second generation. And I just want a few more over this side. Now again, I'm afraid I have to take the ink to my stamp each time. If I try and do that, I've discovered I end up getting ink on the edges of my, my acrylic block and then I get lines on the design. So that's why I do it that way. So I like that shape and I am going to introduce some black on top. And the same at the bottom, we'll just add some. And again, you just take your time and see exactly where. I don't want it right across the bottom because I don't want it to look like I've just literally stamped them like it's all regimented. And ferns tend to grow in clumps. So that's what I'm thinking going to have a clump of these wild ferns here. So I'll stop with the green and I'll come in with the black. And when I do the black, you'll see, and I'm going to use a smaller one, there's two sizes on this. You'll see how stamping in black just brings it to the foreground. Look, you see, I've got some ink just on my block. I've put one there. Such a delicate stamp, this. So, can you see here how now the darker ones are in? So, you've just built up more layers and you've got more interest here. So, and that, see, to me, doesn't look finished. So, we'll add the black stamping. And hopefully you can see just how it makes a difference. So, we've got some gaps, look. And that's where we can come in. And I could use the large stamp as well if I wanted. And again, you will take your time. I mean, if you've got any of your, your pound, your leaf stamps, you could introduce some other leaves as well or some of the little berries. And I don't want to overcook it. I think maybe just a couple there. Let's turn it round. Looks a bit need something there doesn't it just a little bit that's better yeah so I'm happy with that so 
So again, what we'll do is just give that a blot. And it is lovely the way that it's all building up. And we're going to come in now with our sacred spells. And this, I just want something more to add to the design. So I want to add some word stamping. Now, one little tip, I draw an arrow on the back of my word stamps, just because before now I have stamped them upside down. And believe you me, if you've ever done that. Now, I'm using Morning Mist. Now, this is a grey, and I did test it first to see if I wanted first or second generation but I'm actually going to use first. But what I will say, the important thing with this is actually getting it straight. Now, I don't want it to take over the design. I just want it coming down the side. So I want it to sort of be an accent, not take over. So I only want a little bit in this corner here, look. Right, now this will mess with your head. I'm doing it upside down. Which means I've got to make sure this is upside down. So let's put that there. I mean, obviously, you do it however you... It's my way of working round. And this just, it just really brings something... If I turn it round, look, stop messing with your head, sorry. It just, for me, helps with that frame and focuses now on here. But because I've used the grey, so that's morning mist. Again, let's make sure this stamp is so well used. Look at it. Even though I clean it every time, look at the colour. Now, what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to block that. And I'm also just going to bring in my heat tool. So do excuse the noise. Just, I want to make sure, because I want to blend a little bit more ink around the edge. And I don't want to smudge that VersaFine clay. And it's so important when you're producing a lovely piece like this. Um, you know, you are making a piece of art. You don't want it to smudge. So just give the back a bit of a dry as well. Now, again... You could leave it like that if you want. I just want to add a little bit more blending. And if I bring the two in, can you see the difference? Now, like I say, if you're happy with this, by all means, you leave it like that. But I just thought I'd come in and show you we're going to blend some graphite. And I'm going to use my, my sponge. Now, again, take it off on the lid. And I always start on the corners because, again, if I've got a lot of ink on, the corners, I want the deeper colour. So on the corner and then along the bottom. And this actually, I think, it's just such a lovely colour, this. <clears throat> if you're scared, sorry, excuse me. If you're um, quite new and it can be quite daunting to use black, this graphite grey is a lovely way of deepening the edges and the frame without going into anything as almost um, frightening as black. Black can be quite, can put people off. It's quite a stark colour. But also obviously the grey goes really well with the blue. So, so can you see how that has added to that frame? But what you can do, now I could leave it like that if I wanted, but I want a little bit more texture. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to double water splat. So I'm going to add more water around the edge, just over that grey. And this is going to add more water droplets. And I just love doing this. And especially when it's two different colours and it gets such a lovely, lovely texture. So you've still got that frame, but you've got extra texture there. Now again, at home, I would leave that to dry naturally. I'm just going to give it a bit of a blot because we just want our last little finishing touch and that's 
the pan pastel as you know this white fine pearl medium which is quite a mouthful to say <clears throat> i adore this and again this lovely applicator so i just want to add a little bit of shimmer in the moon look and what you can do i'm going to take it over this fern because this moon is just glowing beautifully and again i'm just going to use my finger to come in and rub and i want to bring that up now you know my camera works not that good but i'm hoping can you see that shimmer it just adds to that lovely effect now again i'm almost fixing it by using my finger we're not going to cover the whole card in it and I just want a little bit down here so it looks like it's that mist and just over that fern there. And again, where we've stamped, it'll just show up beautifully. And it just goes and adds to the whole design. And it's just a light. I'm not putting lots on. So if you're worried about it coming off, A, don't put too much on. And again, the reason I use my finger is just so I can almost rub it in to fix it. Now, if you wanted, you could use a spray fixative. But for me, for this size of design, um, there's no need. But by all means, you want to use a spray fixative. But if I'm just going to stand up to see if I can just show you. If I can just... Oh, do you know what? Let's add a little bit round his light. I nearly forgot, poor Basil, his light there's glowing. So that needs a little bit round there. So if I bring this up, can you see here where we've got it? That lovely misty. And on the moon look, trying to get that sparkle. Just to show you, and it just adds that extra little touch to your card. Now, for me, that could be in, in a storybook, couldn't it? I just think it's beautiful. Maybe you could do a gatefold card and make a couple of these. Maybe there's somebody here. Maybe he's gone to wake somebody up. So if I bring in the finished design, so obviously this one I've matted on the black card. This one, I'll just show you what it would look like on the white. So like I say, there's a nothing difficult there, just a lot of little processes. Now do remember with these YouTubes that if it's all new to you and you're sort of one of our newbie followers and it's always lovely to, to meet you, um, you can pause these YouTubes, you can come and watch it back. You know, if you find this too daunting, just watch it back and pause at each little bit. Just break it down. I always find with workshops, if we break it down into sections, it's just like a recipe. It's just one little trick after another. And honestly, I'm hoping you'll enjoy this. So, I'm going to go now. Oh, it's magic. Look, it's moving. Thank you for spending time with me. I hope you have a go at this. And um, if you do, tag me in. I'd love to see what you create. And maybe we can have a little story with our Basil. Who's he going to wake up? Maybe you've got the ladders. You could stamp the ladder. Oh, maybe he's going to meet somebody. Do you think they'll open off to Gretna Green? I'll tell you what, my mind, you know, I think I better stop now. So you take care, everybody. Thanks as always. Love and hugs from me. Bye for now.